Today I'm gonna challenge myself with this 100 piece Where's Waldo jigsaw puzzle. And then I'll be moving on to this 550 piece Where's Waldo puzzle. And then the 1000 piece Waldo. And then if I get through all of that, Hi, I'm Dan, and this is Puzzle File. This is gonna be a two-part series where I tackle these Where's Waldo puzzles. So in this video, you'll see me do the 100 piece, the 550 piece, and the 1000 piece. And in the next part, I'll take on the 3000 piece Waldo. I'm gonna be referring to him as Waldo. All my puzzles are branded as Where's Waldo, but I know he goes by different names in different countries. Actually, the original was Where's Wally in England, he was created by English illustrator Martin Hanford. The story is that Martin Hanford liked illustrating these big, busy crowd scenes, and he wanted to do a whole picture book of just crowd scene after crowd scene. His publishers felt like there wasn't enough of a theme to tie it all together, so someone from his publishers came up with the idea of introducing a character that would be in every scene to give us sort of a through line. And so Waldo was born and was an instant phenomenon. His travels have been reproduced in many different languages and countries, and there have been quite a lot of jigsaw puzzles put out as well. Waldo jigsaw puzzles have been released by lots of companies over the years. I'm doing puzzles from what seem to be the two biggest releases of Waldo puzzles. My 100 and my 550 are from Great American Puzzle Factory. These came out in 1989 and 1990, so shortly after the release of the first Waldo books. The two bigger ones are from Aquarius and were released a lot more recently. I don't know the exact date for these, but when I look online, I don't see any reference to them before 2020, so I think that's about when they came out. The Aquarius ones are still available, so I'll link to them down in the description if you're as interested in puzzle torture as I am. I honestly am not sure how difficult these are really going to be. I know they're not going to be easy, and the 3,000 piece will be difficult just based on the fact that it's 3,000 pieces. I think actually the Land of Waldos will be the most difficult image of the four but obviously the 3000 piece is going to take me the longest. Let's go ahead and dive in with the 100 piece Waldo. This one's sort of a little test just to see what these are gonna be like. Shouldn't take us too long at 100 pieces. Okay, so on the box for this one, this is a beach scene. It's called On the Beach, made by Great American Puzzle Factory. Copyright 1989. On this side of the box, we've got a checklist of different things that we can find in the puzzle. I got my vintage Waldos on eBay, and this one is sealed with scotch tape. Have a look. Oh yeah, look at these giant pieces. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard at all. The pieces have a nice thickness to them. They feel pretty sturdy. Great American Puzzle Factory did nice puzzles. So my plan for this one is I'm going to start with the sky and the sea because those seem to be the most distinct section. Then I'll probably finish up the edge of the beach and then start filling in the rest of it. Again, it's 100 pieces. This isn't going to take us too long. Okay, sorting took three and a half minutes. I did more sorting than I usually do. We've got all the blue stuff over here, edges and non-edges. And all the yellow stuff is over here, edges, the uh, shoreline pieces, and then the rest of the yellow. So I'm hoping we can have this whole puzzle put together in under 10 minutes total. Let's see. That ended 
ended up taking 18 and a half minutes. I didn't quite make my 10 minute goal. This was a fun little puzzle. I so rarely do puzzles that are less than 500 pieces and I forget how fun it can be. I did find Waldo while I was working on it. I'm gonna show you where he is, so if you don't wanna be spoiled, close your eyes right now. There he is. Okay, you can open him. Also in this puzzle is the infamous topless sunbather. The book that featured this Waldo image was banned from libraries and some retailers in the US because of this lady. In later printings of the book, she was redrawn with her top back on. I'm not gonna look for the whole checklist of items right now because I've got bigger fish to fry, but maybe I'll come back and do that later. So what did we learn here that I can apply to the bigger puzzles? Well, right away I figured out it's very easy to tell which way is up on all these pieces. So for the big ones, I can help myself out a lot in the sorting by turning everything right side up from the start. Another thing that really helped me on this one is that the crowd gets smaller and more densely packed the further up you go. I don't know if that's gonna be true for the bigger ones too. I haven't studied those pictures very closely, but it did help me out on this one. Other than that, it was just about paying really close attention to little details, seeing I've got half a blue shirt on this piece and the other half is on this piece. I didn't use the box to help me on this one since it was just 100 pieces, but I am gonna be using the boxes going forward because I think I'm gonna need all the help I can get. Let's move on to the 550. 550 piece Waldo is called the Land of Waldos. Again, I think this is gonna be the most difficult image of the four. The challenge here is you're supposed to locate Waldo with the missing shoe and then find his shoe as well. Again, we have a checklist of other items we can look for in this puzzle. This one looks really tricky, I'm nervous about it. Okay, the pieces seem to be about the same as the 100 piece puzzle, just smaller. Still a good size, easy to see what's going on. So what's gonna be our strategy for this one? Well, I have it halfway figured out. I know how I'm gonna start, I don't know how I'm gonna finish. I think I will start by doing the edge on this one. And then we obviously have two non-Waldo features here, this little creature and this giant man. So those will be the easiest parts to do next. From there, I'm kind of not sure what my strategy is gonna be. Uh, we don't seem to have the same shrinking into the distance effect that we had on the beach, so I can't use that. We do have some different concentrations of Waldos, some areas that are densely packed with Waldos, and some areas where Waldos are a little sparser. So I think that might help as I get further along. I honestly don't know how long this one is gonna take me. I think it could be pretty rough. not a very fast sword. It took me about half an hour, but I think we are in a pretty good position now to get started. This puzzle has a random piece cut, lots of different fun and interesting shapes. It kind of reminds me of the Springbok piece cut, particularly because we've got all these little guys. That's like a Springbok signature shape right there. I have found doing spring box that it helps me to sort these little ones out into their own section from the start, so that's what I did here. I'm gonna start by assembling the frame, which I think shouldn't be too hard because we know which way is up on all of the pieces. It has turned out to be immensely important that I can tell which way is up on all these pieces. With the random piece cut, it's sort of impossible to sort these by shape. Look at how unusual all these shapes are. 
But because I know which way is up, I've been able to sort them just based on what's on the bottom and left side of the piece. So these are all an in on the bottom and an out to the left. These are all out to the bottom, out to the left. So when I come up here, I'm looking for spots where I can see the bottom and left side. I need an in and an in. I come over here to my in and in section. I think it's gonna be this one. Couple more Waldos. Okay, so my final time for this one, uh, my timer only goes up to 10 hours, so it's 10 hours plus this. It was 11 hours and 23 minutes. So that's a little longer than I expected this one to take. I was really slowed down by the random piece cut on this one. This was mostly fun. There were times where I went long stretches where I wasn't getting any pieces in. But for the most part, I was able to keep progressing if very slowly, and of course the last 50 pieces or so just flew in. That was a lot of fun. I didn't find Waldo while I was doing this puzzle. The Waldo with the missing shoe. So I need to search for him right now. Oh my god, this is really hard. So many Waldos. I don't know if I'm looking for a bare foot or a sock. Oh my god, I got it. That took me so long. If you don't want to know the answer, close your eyes right now. There he is. Okay, you can open them. Let me show you my favorite parts of this picture. There's mostly Waldos, but there's a few other characters from some of his other journeys mixed in here. And I love this part over here where all the Waldos are tipping their hats to this lady. And over here where all the Waldos are laying down with the mermaid. But my favorite part is where the Waldos appear to be playing hide and seek with this giant. All the Waldos around him are searching. So I'm about ready to start the thousand piece Waldo. This one has a dinosaur theme and it appears that this image was created for the jigsaw puzzle. This is not from one of the classic Where's Waldo books. So in the last one, I learned how important it can be to have everything turned the right way up. I'll definitely be working with that strategy again. I think this one is going to be easier because there's more going on in the image for me to work with and because I don't think Aquarius does random cut pieces. So I think this one will flow a little bit easier but I still think it'll take longer than the 550 just because it's a thousand pieces. We'll see. I'd be delighted to get this done in under 10 hours. Okay let's open this up and see what we're working with. Okay, here we go. A little bit of a different style on this box. We've got our new puzzle image with the dinosaurs. And our guy is hidden in here somewhere. There's no extra checklist of things to find on this box. Really just the picture. Okay, we've got the pieces in a plastic bag. And these don't look bad. And nothing else in the box. All right, as I expected, these are more traditional ribbon cut pieces. So hopefully that'll give us a little advantage on this one. They're actually a pretty good thickness. They're better than I remembered Aquarius being. And they're smaller than the 550, of course, but they're not too tiny. I'm really not seeing any puzzle dust either. That's nice. So I'm going to take my time with this initial sort. I'm going to turn everything face up. I'm going to turn everything right side up. I'm gonna sort by piece shape, and I'm gonna pull the edge pieces. Here we go, thousand piece Waldo.
Well, this is going to gather a lot smoother than the Land of Waldos. I actually think that I wasted a lot of time sorting everything by piece shape right from the start because I haven't been using piece shape at all yet. I'm still working off of colors and textures. I think the Land of Waldos was such tricky technical puzzling that it really had me braced for this to be a difficult experience. And this one's just a whole different ball game. Let's take a look. So, so far I've been focusing on two things, big distinct dinosaurs like these and sections of like dinosaurs. So over here we've got these spotty green ones and these spotty red ones, and this is the only section of the puzzle where those textures appear. Same thing with these blue striped guys down in this corner. So moving forward, we've got a few species of dinosaurs that just appear up here, so I might work on that section. There's a few other big dinosaurs I can try to pull out, but what I think I'm gonna do next is pull all the pieces that have water in the background. Get this filled in and this section up here. So this has been very workable and I'm feeling a lot more confident about getting to the 3000 piece. I cannot believe how much faster that went than the Land of Waldos. That's just over eight hours for that thousand piece. I was so surprised at the way this one just kept flowing. I thought that once I had all the big dinosaurs done, anything that was easily identifiable, it was gonna be just a nightmare of trying to pick out tiny little details and fill in all the gaps. But by the time I got there, I actually knew the image really well, and so everything just kind of fell into place. The last hundred pieces was super fast and fun. Let me show you where Waldo's hiding, so if you don't wanna see, close your eyes now. Tricky one. Okay, you can open them. Again, this puzzle had lots of little fun details to discover, my favorite part was these rowers up in the upper right corner, and then this poor guy on the blue team, his whole team has fallen asleep on him. I'm gonna save some of my thoughts for the next video. In the next video, I'm doing the 3000 piece Waldo, and then I'll give you all my thoughts about all four puzzles. All right, I'm gonna get back to Waldoing. Catch you all next time.